Welcome back everybody to another indie MMO devlog. This week I'm working on some changes to my dungeon generation algorithm. The old generator wasn't too bad, but I did have some limitations that I wanted to get rid of. I tried a lot of different things and most of them ended up not working, so hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and not make the same ones in your game. My old generator worked by placing a spawn room, then it would randomly decide to walk either up, down, left, or right, connecting the previous room to the new room. It's pretty simple, but it does come with a few downsides. Because the room blocks are placed on a grid, they have to be approximately the same size. If they're too big, it will cause the rooms to collide, and if they're too small, then there will be long, unnecessary hallways connecting each room. The generator finishes each dungeon by placing a boss room. Because it's just randomly walking around on a grid, it would sometimes cause the boss room to be placed directly next to the spawn room, which is obviously not very good for the pacing of the dungeon. Ideally, we'd have at least a few rooms between the spawn room and the boss room. That way the player is forced to get a few item upgrades before they attempt to fight the boss. I read about how other games solve these problems and found a really good article about Enter the Gungeon. Their approach to the pacing problem was to use a handcrafted graph as the basis for their procedural generation. This abstract representation describes which rooms are connected to which other rooms. It also decides the content of each room. Is it a normal room? A boss room? A merchant room? This seemed like a great fit to all of my problems. I could just predefine a few flow graphs and then pick rooms out of a pool and place them on the map at runtime. Easy, right? Well, as it turns out, writing an algorithm to place rooms is fairly challenging and often involves a lot of backtracking. I kept having colliding rooms and my hallways were all crisscrossed. So I did a bit more research. Apparently what I was trying to generate was a planar drawing of a graph with minimized edge crossings. There's a few algorithms to do this, most of which would probably generate terrible looking dungeons. But there are some which seemed promising. And if you want to get a feel for why this is difficult, there's a game called Planarity that I linked in the description. All you have to do is get rid of all of the edge crossings, and it's pretty fun. Anyways, after a bit more research, I found a heuristic-based algorithm called Force-Based Graph Drawing. In this algorithm, you essentially apply a physics simulation on your graph to have it untangle itself. Each connection acts like a spring, and every node acts like two charged particles repelling each other. This approach gave me decent results when untangling the graph, but it was hard to find the correct force weights to move the rooms next to each other while still keeping the graph untangled. I ended up with a multi-stage layout algorithm. In the first stage, I would continually add nodes while simultaneously running the physics simulation expanding everything outward. The goal of this stage was just to get a planar drawing where there are no edge crossings. I would constantly rerun this stage, cutting off any part of the graph which contained edge crossings, which would sometimes lead to the entire graph getting redrawn. After stage 1 finished, stage 2 would try to compress the graph as much as possible, basically applying a gravitational force that pulled every node inward. It would also increase the attractive spring force and reduce the repulsive force. This is where I had a lot of trouble with weights. It was difficult to find the right balance, and a lot of edges would end up becoming crossed. I was also not happy with how long the algorithm took when multiple reruns occurred. I decided to rethink the entire problem and it made a few compromises along the way. I was happy with the room graph generated by my original random walk based dungeon, but I wanted to solve the original two problems. First I wanted to make sure that I could add constraints on rooms, for example I always wanted the boss room to be far away from the spawn room, and second I want to make the layout a bit more natural where I can have multiple sized rooms that aren't always laid out on a grid. So I ended up using the random walk approach to simultaneously generate the room graph and its planar drawing on the grid. Then I run a post processing step where I assign a room type to each node, I make the root node a spawn room and choose faraway leaf nodes as the boss room. Essentially, I'll use this post-processing step as my time to apply any pacing rules that I want my dungeon to have. Now that I have a well-paced dungeon and a planar drawing of all of the room nodes, I randomly pick a room rectangle for each node type. Then I increase the graph size until some minimum gap is achieved between all of the rooms. At this point, I have a full dungeon that I could easily render into a final product. The only downside is that every room is grid snap. So to make things a bit more natural, I do something similar to the gravity compression that I talked about earlier. But basically, I just move every room towards the spawn room, but if the room collides with another room, or it loses its axis alignment with its parent, then I undo the movement for just that room. The key to this algorithm is that every step of the way, I ensure that none of my room alignment constraints are broken, so I never have to repair any hallways or relocate rooms. I can always just back up by one step and I'm guaranteed to have a valid dungeon. I'm pretty happy with the final product, though it did take a few tries to get right. I think it gives me nice looking, slightly grid based dungeons, which is exactly what I wanted. Alright, that's all I have for this week. As always, an absolutely massive thank you to all the supporters on YouTube, GitHub, and Patreon. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.